Here and now, here we are with the whole team here, all together. Ahmad of Palestine, Hi. Steve Struggle of the Black Nation in the so-called United States of America. And I'm here in Montreal, Quebec. Quebec is in Canada, but Quebec is Quebec. So never mind about Canada. <laughs> Canada is still this ruled by King Charles III. Did you know that? Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. And, and Quebec also, unfortunately, for the moment. Well, actually, who's ruling Canada is not him, nor Trudeau. It's it's the uh, oligarchy. The, yes. The big business oligarchy who are... Yes, uh, yes, in, in yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and, and guess, and guess where that people. oligarchy comes from? United yeah. States of America. Oh, Canada yeah. is just a colony. Economic colony, or the economic colony. Yep. yeah, of the United States, you know, like, uh, and when people realize that, you know, they will do something about it. But so far, there was a movement at one point, but they blew it anyway. It'll come back. That's true. Now, let's talk about Palestine. Yes, there was a, the massacre yesterday. I mean, how can they get away with this? You know, it's incredible. You know, and Biden has just approved the the transfer of 500 pound bombs not 2000 yes. pound bombs oh yes he's a nice guy you know like just 500 pound bombs you know that's a nice bomb <laughs> uh it's uh, it's so uh, sickening to hear this uh, you know playing on on words uh, about uh, 500 uh, pounds versus uh, one 2000 uh, pounds as if like the 500 uh, pounds is small and doesn't kill people in, in, in Gaza Strip or elsewhere. It's uh, it's disgusting. Actually, they are they are releasing those two thousand uh, uh, bombs, two thousand pound bombs, to the Zionist army. Anyway, it it will not change anything. The stockpile of the Zionist uh, they they have of two thousand pounds. Uh, it's uh, could last them for a, up to a year. So mm-hmm. this uh, holding of two thousand bombs are they can affect it in one year time. Mm-hmm. So it's just only uh, gimmicks uh, by the United States uh, administration showing they are uh, they're doing something, mm-hmm. doing something, which is actually nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I uh, I think that the the use of these of uh, these deadly munitions is a clear indication that the United States is completely hypocritical when it talks about a peace plan or some kind of reconstruction or a- anything like that related to uh, the, the, the 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 situation in Palestine. Mm-hmm. Its support for Israel is not only based on this on this law on this war of Israel against the Palestinians, but because Israel is a non-NATO ally of the United States, and that's a category of countries that the United States has specified, because they are a non-ally, they non-NATO ally, they get special military privileges anyway. So these bombs, they would get something irrespective of, of, of what they're doing right now. That's That's their character, and that's why Violence, political violence in the United States should not be should not be considered unusual since the United States cares about political violence across the world. And we have to continue to support the Palestinian resistance and to keep that in our thinking and, and in our in our political work, because that's 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 to me, one of the main focuses of, of the world today is is what's happening in Palestine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 there's an agreement uh, between the United States and the Zionist state. It's, uh, uh, it's a, a military alliance. It's yes. as, as good as the NATO alliance, actually more. Yes. Uh, so uh, basically, the uh, United States have more than one alliance. It has alliance with the, the NATO countries. It has alliance with South and South Korea and Japan. It has another alliance with the United States. It, it has a name. I can't. I can't remember the name. It's like the most uh, 
a favorable nation militarily outside of NATO. There's only two countries in the Middle East has this alliance. It's uh, the so-called Israel and uh, the fifthdom of uh, Qatar. Right. They have yeah. this alliance. Yeah. Right. So, right. I have a... Uh, and while we were talking about what a, a 500 or 2,000 pound bomb, you know, uh, is all about, you know, I have a video here that uh, <clears throat> that can uh, help us. And uh, comes from my Facebook uh, page. And this is a uh, QR code to go to an article by the... Um, Israeli philosopher Leibovitz, who calls the Zionists Judeo-Nazis. He invented that term. And he explains in a conference there. Here is Israel media turns on Netanyahu. Finally. Here is uh, Miriam Margolis, uh, a Jewish anti-Zionist in England. Yes. She calls for the Jewish people to shout, beg, scream for a ceasefire in Gaza. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And here is Gaza. Yes, that's uh, actually it, it was a 2000. Uh, it's a J, J dam uh, missile or uh, ammunition that rained on the tent uh, city where, as uh, refugees or the displaced Palestinians, being murdered by 2000 pound bomb, wow. murdering over 90 and uh, Three, 270 injured, many of them are were on our uh, seriously injured. So, so many will, will uh, unfortunately will die due to lack of medical uh, supplies, and medical equipment, and medical uh, medicine to save mm -hmm. their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. Look at that. It's, it's, it's massive. Right in the middle of hundreds of civilians thousands of civilians yeah and what what's the answer for that why they do that or did because they notice that there's uh, a hamas uh, leader or hamas leaders among civilians so basically they murdered all these people in order to get that person that's in that's a war crime and it's in in contrary to the international law and the Geneva Four Convention Conventions. Basically, the law is very, very clear that mm -hmm. if you know, if you see uh, or notice, or you know, there is a military or military fire coming from an area which has civilians, you cannot reply. You cannot fight. You cannot target that area. Mm -hmm. And they, they did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, international law also, also stipulates that um, where there are hostages, there is no legal right to uh, to kill the hostage takers and the hostages at the same time, like they did, you know, in the kibbutz Berry, which yes. has now been revealed, you know, by the Haaretz newspaper, which did a feature article on <laughs> the Hannibal Directive. Yes. And now, you know, all the Israelis know, but all the Jewish people outside of Israel don't know. <laughs> They don't want to know. Some of them, they don't want to know. And they don't want to know. Yeah. They yeah. don't want to know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's sad. Uh, I was listening to uh, Netanyahu in English saying that he was personally, uh, who he personally approved that so-called operation on high value target in, in, in the Al Mawasi area. Uh, in near uh, Khan Yunis, and they told him the calculation of collateral damage, and due to the high value of the target, he approved it. He was mm. saying that he I it. approve this carnage. Mm. He he just like he he doesn't need to be at the at the head uh, in the in <laughs> in the accused box to say that he said it. Mm. Free will that I personally directed the murder of 90 innocent civilians and the injuries of 270 others, many of them mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, in, uh, in serious condition. 
and I heard that the um, targeted Hamas fighter wasn't killed. He survived. He was not there. He wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> he was not there. <laughs> the thing is, they were supposed to hit uh, Muhammad Daif, okay, and Samar Isa. Both of them are high ranking Al Qassam Brigade's uh, leaders. And uh, there was nothing there. Obviously, they want to create this garnish, another to, to, as a pressure tactic on the resistance to yield more conditions, uh, to yield more uh, under pressure for the Zionist negotiator, negotiators in Qatar. Has nothing to do with uh, targeting uh, Muhammad Daif. It's, it's mm -hmm. a lie. If he was mm -hmm. there, he would have been killed. Uh -huh. But he was not there. Uh -huh. It's a uh -huh. lie. It's a big lie. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the Zionists don't want to continue with negotiations. They're just pretending to do so. Yes, uh, yes. That's that's uh, what Netanyahu's intention from the get go. I never, yeah. I don't ever believe the Zionists want to wanted uh, uh, any peaceful settlement or negotiated settlement to this uh, genocide. They want to continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because Netanyahu wants to uh, continue as the prime minister because any end of uh, this genocide, he will be going to jail mm -hmm. by the Zionists. But doesn't make the, doesn't make the other Zionists better than him. Mm -hmm. You know, they are the same. Yeah. They, <laughs> oh, yeah. They, just, they talk yeah. the same. They say the same thing. They, they say the same lies in the same way. It's incredible, you know, how homogeneous the Zionist movement has been able to create this, uh, this uh, what's called a, uh, a dibik. In Yiddish, it's a dibik, which is uh, like a monster. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Like, until now, about 70% of the Zionist uh, colonists within, within Palestine, okay, that's a big change from 94%, they still want to the continuation of the carnage in Gaza and mm -hmm. uh, for in a lesser degree in the West Bank. And those 70% wants, to, wants some kind of settlement in order to go north to fight Hezbollah. Mm. So these mm -hmm. people, they just gone crazy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It, it reminds me of another uh, legend, you know, in Yiddish, Yiddish kite, uh, uh, the story of the golem. There was a story about this, uh, uh, a rabbi who uh, created a, like a Frankenstein type uh, monster, not mm -hmm. monster, but a, a creature that he brought to life by putting the name of God on its forehead in Hebrew. Uh -huh. Okay, so and this uh, <clears throat> this uh, golem was supposed to was made was brought into existence in order to protect the Jewish ghetto from the uh, from the pogromists who were coming to kill the Jewish people. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so this golem, you know, does it? You know, protects the Jewish ghetto and everything like that. But the golem doesn't know what it's doing. You know, so it continues on. You know, fighting everybody around it. You know, it doesn't stop. <laughs> and this yes. is what the Zionists have created. They've created a golem state, and they call it a Jewish state. Yes. I was at a demonstration one time at a village just outside Nablus called uh, Kufr Khalil, up in the mountain, just over the um, Hawara checkpoint. And you can see the Hawara checkpoint. And when they close it down, you can see kilometers long lines of cars waiting to get through who can't get through. So, you know, every uh, Friday, you know, we were having a demonstration there. And, the, and they would send two soldiers to uh, to threaten us and shoot rubber bullets at us, okay? <clears throat> so they were, you know, the soldiers were hidden behind, you know, some barrels, and we were uh, hidden behind some rocks. We were throwing, and you know, the kids were throwing stones. This is kids, you know, like teenagers and children throwing stones at the two soldiers, and they would be shooting rubber bullets back. And, you know, it got to be boring. So, you know, I thought, well, let's try something different. So I said to all, all of the... Uh, the, the Palestinians, you know, I explained to them what, you know, a golem was as best I could, <laughs> you know, speaking, you know, like, you know, like element, you know, like with a poor, you know, little Arabic that I know. And so they understood, you know, what golem meant. Okay. So, and I said that we were going to shout out the word golem against the soldiers and the soldiers would know what it means, you know, because they've been raised on this, you know, as kids, you know, they, they're told the, you know, kid story about the golem. <laughs> 
So we started shouting, Golem, <laughs> Golem, Golem, you know, and the soldiers stopped shooting and they stood up and they looked at us and they were so amazed that we were shouting at them, Golem, and they were so embarrassed that they were called a Golem. And then, uh -huh. you know, after a minute, you know, of course, they, they sat down again and started shooting again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, you were telling uh, me beforehand that you have some uh, information lined up, you know, that uh, we need to know. Yeah, I just wanted to share, just let let people know that um, if I can, I don't know if I can show it, brother. Um, basically, there's a there's a there's a there's a channel on. Um, on Telegram called Resistance News Network, okay? Hmm. And I wanted to just let let some of our viewers, listeners, and people know that Resistance News Network, yeah, we, yeah, we, I think we have a little trouble because I'm on the phone sharing it. So there, there, they have some reports from, military reports from um, Palestine, What's happening? Just you don't hear a military report. You hear more of, of a, a two side. What some of the resistance forces are doing, what the Israelis are doing, as well as reports from the resistance themselves, speeches from the different brigades. And just want to encourage our our viewers to go on Telegram, look at Resistance News Network, and you'll get a lot of the updates on the casualties in, in the field the need for humanitarian assistance directly from the Palestinian sources, not from AP, uh, um, even from, not even from Al, Al, Al Jazeera. And I find it very good to read this sometime because the U.S. press doesn't tell you anything mm -hmm. besides, oh, Israel did this, and oh, you know, and we gave us, some, and the U.S. gave us more money to kill, to kill Palestinians. I think it's important as a way of supporting the Palestinian resistance to look at those news reports. And I'm sorry because I'm on a phone, it's hard to share screen. I'm sorry about that. But I just wanted to share, let, let our viewers know that I find it very helpful to go on to go on Telegram and look at Resistance News Network. It comes right from the Palestinian sources themselves, mm -hmm. from, from, from different brigades, and different people within the resistance movement. Mm -hmm. And I, I find it very helpful, very um, uh, in, 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 inspirational to me as well as um reminds me that there's something going on thousands of miles from me that i can't participate in directly but that i i, I can support in various ways that's all that's what i just want to share with people talking about i want to bring uh, up a subject about casualties uh, of this uh, genocide uh, there is uh, an article written by the British uh, Health Journal called The Lancet. Yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, which is estimated the the casualty of this genocide to 186,000 Palestinian civilians because there's uh, and according to the last 15 or 20 wars the actual numbers of the casualties, it's like the, the announced direct casualties times between three times to uh, three times to 15 times the actual casualties. Right. So if we, if we talking about, there's about uh, 50,000 casualties, direct casualties by the Palestinian uh, in the uh, within the Palestinian population. That's including those who are murdered and those who are accounted for because they're under the rubble and there's no machinery to lift the rubble to to retrieve the bodies. So within the most conservative estimate, the the actual uh, death rate due to famine disease, uh, lack of medication, lack of equipment to uh, medicate people, all that is within the most conservative uh, estimate is 186,000 Palestinians. The vast, the absolute vast majority of them are civilians, men, women, children, elderly, 
etc. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it's about, you're talking about 8% of the Palestinian living in Gaza are dead due to this carnage. It's uh, waged by United States through the Zionist against uh, the Palestinians for the past nine, over nine months in Gaza Strip. This is despicable. This is horrible. This is Holocaust. And it's not stopping. It's continuing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will, that's, I, that's I'd like to, uh, that's, this is very important so people know that uh, the, the, the indirect, yet it's direct, <sighs> but indirect death toll is much higher than those people who uh, die due to the bombing and, and shooting and uh, you name it. Mm -hmm. the, the regular media, the corporate media, and even the social media only report the number of deaths, immediate deaths. Exactly. And they tally this, you know, at 40,000 or thereabouts. But, but I, you know, I, like I, with I, all, I, the, I, all the crossing points, you know, for, uh, closed, not only food is not getting in, but antibiotics are not getting in. Exactly. That means yeah. that any injury whatsoever gets infected and is life-threatening as a result. And the only way to stop it is by amputation, you know, as a result. And, and in many cases, of course, that wouldn't work, you know. So, you know, they don't, you know, the media doesn't report a number of, you know, injured Palestinians, which is so much greater, you know. It's over 90,000 at this point, okay? And you're going to expect... Some of the this eighty ninety thousand people died of their wounds. These wound, wounded people they go unnoticed by the media as a direct uh, uh, death toll of this uh, genocide carried by uh, United States and the Zionist uh, entity. I, I emphasize it's the United States who is carrying this genocide against the Palestinian people. Uh, you know, uh, in collaboration with the Zionist state. And it, of course, uh, behind them, not too far, uh, the imperialist powers in the West, which is Germany, France, uh, UK, Canada, and Australia. Those are very important to, to point out. These people are also uh, uh, culprit to, to such uh, a genocide. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of the uh, the painting that I made uh, that I used as a protest sign at the vigil <clears throat> here in Montreal at the Jewish community campus. And this upset the Zionists a great deal. And the painting said, one Holocaust does not justify another. So I would hold exactly. this up. One uh, Zionist uh, driving by swerved to try to hit the sign when I was holding it at the edge of the sidewalk and hit my arm. But and she real. missed she missed. Okay. And another Zionist was so upset by that painting, you know, like a painting. And, you know, he tried to grab it, you know, and take it away and, and destroy it. But I conveniently had the bamboo poles installed in the uh, banner to hold it up at either end. And I used it, you know, to give him a nice shock in his thigh. And he backed off. He got scared. <laughs> and, I, and, and then he tried to grab the bamboo pole. I pulled it out of his hands and I put it up and I raised it higher. Mm -hmm. you know, so it was at his head level, you know. So if he came any closer, you know, he would get it. And he backed off. You know, that's the way you deal with sinus. And then he came over to talk. He wanted to debate after that, you know. He sort of calmed down. And two of them, you know, were, came over and started to talk to me, you know. So I said, okay, talk, you know, that's fine. But uh, they were too close, you know because they were dangerous. So I said yes, to them, okay, back off. And I didn't even have to, you know, like do anything physical. I just said it and they backed off, you know, both at the same time, you know, like step back, you know, and they did, you know, they were afraid because they were defeated both, you know, militarily and intellectually, you know, and they only were coming back, you know, to talk to me because they're trying to regain some ground, but they never made any headway and eventually they left. That's no, the way it is with the Zionists. That's how you deal with the Zionists. Yeah. They're just a bunch of cowards. That's what they are. B cowards with big bombs and big uh, airplanes that and and, and cannons uh, shooting from afar on helpless uh, civilians. Mm -hmm. he, a person who does that is a coward. 
and 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 and, and mass murder. They're just mm. nothing less than Nazis. That's what mm. the Zionists are. They're mm. the 21st century Nazis. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's the uh, demonstrations it's, have been getting bigger. I don't know. I haven't been able to follow them, you know, very well. Yes. I don't know Hebrew, you know, so I don't follow that sort of stuff. I don't follow Israeli politics very, very well. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, they're still uh, within acceptable level to Netanyahu that continue what he's doing. Uh, uh, the maximum number that the Zionists can muster is about maximum is at three hundred thousand. Uh, it's no, no, uh, no near uh, to it was prior to October seventh when the people they used to go out into the streets up to one million. Uh -huh. So, uh, but the vast majority, as I said. Of the Israelis or the Zionist colonists are behind that war. Mm. As long as this continues, Netanyahu is comfortable doing mm. what he's doing. Okay. Yeah. Yes, actually, it serves him well. Shows that the Israeli society is vibrant and there's anti-war. There's not anti-war. These mm. people, they they want they want a, a deal. Then after the deal, go ahead and do whatever you need. Mm. Okay, it's the same thing. And they want another war with Lebanon. They want to go up to Lebanon and fight a war in Lebanon. Mm. The Zionists are, are, are scared. Okay, they feel this is exceptional uh, uh, war for them. And it's a make or break uh, issue for them. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think this uh, demonstration would do anything mm -hmm. unless there's civil disobedience in the Zionist streets, like, you know, at strikes, closing the stores, no production, you know, basically shutting down the, the Zionist colony. Then mm -hmm. Netanyahu has to take notice of that. So far, the so-called labor movement, so-called the labor movement, the, the Zionist mm. the labor movement called the history has done nothing mm. to shut down the Zionist economy. And they are in cahoots with, uh, with Netanyahu. So mm. uh, I, li I don't like to use uh, this, uh, you know, the Palestinian ver versus Netanyahu. No, no. Netanyahu, he, he is the spearhead of the Zionist colonists in Palestine. He is the address, but he is not alone. There are 64, 64 seats of the Knesset out of 120 in his coalition. His uh, chief of chief of army is in on his side because the other day he reiterated exactly what Netanyahu wanted. Mm -hmm. He said there will be no cessation of fire until we uh, destroy Hamas. But basically destroying the Palestinian people because mm. Hamas is just part of the Palestinian people who is mm. who are resisting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I can report that in the uh, Jewish people, the older generations are still stuck with Zionism, but the younger generations, <clears throat> I can uh, say that fifty percent are have become anti-Zionist. Jewish Voice for Peace has become anti-Zionist. Now, the Jewish Voice of Peace just had a press conference in which they made a, a declaration, which is very important, because finally, they're talking about the Jewish people and how the Jewish people uh, have to uh, carry themselves with respect to Zionism. And she pointed out, and she was speaking to the Jewish people, finally, not just doing public relations, but yeah. actually doing a strategic orientation to transforming the Jewish people. She said, look, Jewish people. Zionism is giving you a bad name. What do you think that's going to do to you? You know, is that going to increase or decrease anti-Semitism? <laughs> you know, like, you know, think of it, you know, like, you know, like, is Zionism in your interest or not? So she was doing a, a very strategic orientation there that is that's powerful good. and going that's to have, you know, an effect. In the United States, I wonder, Steve, you know, like, what is the, uh, what is the reaction now? Has there been a change in the mentality of the American public in general? That's a good question because the movement supporting Palestine 
is basically, in my view, a student movement. This is my view. I could be wrong. There have been some trade unions, service employees, international union, um, some, I think, some Teamster locals have taken positions supporting a ceasefire. So remember, American politics is very tame. It's tame. It doesn't challenge the system. It just makes a polite opposition. That's what it's all about. It's not about challenging the system. It's not about challenging money for Israel. That is not challenged. Hmm. It's not challenging support for Israel. That is not. It, you may hear someone say that, but the politics is, can we please have a ceasefire, Mr. Biden, please? Hmm. And that's going to get you just so far. Hmm. I think the majority of Americans don't, more, Americans don't speak in rallies. They don't speak in marches. The, mayor, the ones who go to work every day, okay? In general, they're quiet. They grumble. They, you know, gnaw their teeth. They throw up their hands, but they don't let their voices be known. It's a very um, unproductive way of having a society. Hmm. So, and, just, and I think that's something we need to think of, talk about sometimes, about the, how Americans do things. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, you had mass protests against, against uh, increase in prices. Mm -hmm. Inflation in America is not low, but there, but, but, there, but, but, but there are no protests. None. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, no, none. So, I think in general, my view is most older Americans, old, I would say 50 or 50 or older, want to still support Israel. They could care less about Palestinian deaths. They, they give, who, who cares? Younger, 45 and younger, are concerned. Hmm, this doesn't look too good. Hmm. Children being killed, women. But what can we do to stop it? Because they don't feel they can even make their politicians do anything. And they're right. Hmm. The politicians do nothing in response to protests. This, this, is, this is the irony of the American system. You can vote. You can demonstrate, make your voices known. But the politicians want money for re-election, and baby, that's it. They want to stay a politician all their life and don't do shit, mm -hmm. but sit in their ass and run their mouth in Congress and have their name on some picture some freaking where. Mm -hmm. So the American people, through unions and through student protests, have shown their opposition to what's happening in 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 Palestine, to the Palestinian people. But I do think it's based on age. Age, and I, I, I want to say occupation, but that probably isn't fair. Uh, within the minority communities, we have uh, a growing opposition, but it's kind of like, how, how does that affect me? I'm, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant Mexican. I'm an oppressed Black person. I'm a, um, you know, I, I'm some ethnic group or minority group. And how does it affect me? There's work being done on that level, but it's slow because there are no groups caring. Groups like Black Lives Matter, uh, other organizations have been very, have been very slow to get involved. However, there has been a movement um, in some black communities to warn the black community that, look, the United States is helping Israel wipe out or oppress, militarily brutalize Palestinian people. Don't you think they'll do the same thing to us at a certain point, to, 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 to the youth that they say are criminals? They yes, they done. will. They have right. done. Right, <laughs> exactly. They've done They're it. Done. Right, uh, They're, right. They're, right. Exactly. exactly. So yeah. that, that message is being carried out slowly, but it's being carried out. So I think there is some hope, but we have to accept there is, among large bodies of Americans, kind of like, this is not good. What can we do, though? There's nothing that we do as far as protests. The protests are designed to raise public opinion. The protests will not stop sitting the, sitting, the, sitting the weapons over there. That's the problem. It's not stopping sitting the weapons. The money still flows. So the question is, how do you, and no one has, has a solution. Or has a, and he, this, well, let's, 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 let's vote in Trump. You have no idea that's going to change anything. And that's, that's, that's the conundrum that we're facing. The way the American political system is set up, 
the voting puts you in power, and then you say, I'm, I'm immune from your protest because I basically want to get reelected. Mm-hmm. And they say whatever that their party boss says to say, that's what they do. So um, I hope that gives you some sense of what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a long way to go then. Okay. Right. Yes. So- yeah. 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 The, the, I, I think the student protests, the student protests are key. If the student protests do not continue when school starts in August, mm. then you're in trouble because, mm-hmm. the, at least in my view, it, 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 if we have mass protests every three months in downtown areas, you're going to have to have the Palestinian. No, I'm, I'm sorry, this is something, something I, that I should share with you. Excuse me, I forgot. In, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I think people should know this around the world. The, 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 the pro-Palestinian movement has taken a different approach. They have meetings, they have protests every week in, in the Bay Area, different Bay Area cities, on corners of Palestinian flags calling for, um, calling for negotiations, calling for peace, etc., calling for stopping military aid to Israel. And then what they do, they go to city councils around the Bay Area, those Oakland... San Bruno, San Pablo, Richmond, you know, they pick cities and they wage a fight in the city councils to have them have a resolution supporting a ceasefire. The Zionists come out, they're nasty, they're rude, but they can't be violent in the city council chamber. Uh No, they can't. No, you can't do that. So it forces them to shut up. And be respectful. We can have a debate. That's what it's been very effective, actually, <laughs> yeah. because it's minimized the Zionist penchant for violence. In LA, you see, you see violence, you know, happened at UCLA, the demonstration in front of a synagogue a month ago. They come out in mobs to attack, to attack, to attack, demonstra- to attack people protesting. In the yes. city council chamber, you can't do that. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and, 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 and they've been effective. And getting some city councils to come on record supporting a ceasefire. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not land, it's not, it's not uh, uh, earth shaking change, but it has kept that movement growing, mm-hmm. and it, it has gained respect among people who go to work every day. Mm-hmm. And that's just kind of how it, how it works in America. And, and I'm, I'm, so I want people to know there has been some success in getting city councils and other bodies of government to go on record supporting the ceasefire. And America, that's just probably going to get right now. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's my I opinion. think that uh, we're still in a primary stage uh, of development in the resistance, you know? Yes, yeah. Uh, we have so. a long ways to go in terms of uh, educating the public in the United States. Long ways yeah. to go in terms of educating the Jewish communities around the world. Long right. ways to go in terms of, and I'd like to point out something here, special, new, in that, um, uh, in terms of you know the degree of organization of the Palestinian resistance. Now, when I was there in Nablus, you know, whenever there was you know a major sort of you know murder by the Zionists, the Palestinian Authority would call a general strike just to show that they're doing something. So all right. the shops would close. Okay, so you, nobody could you know go on with their regular life. But at the same time, in the early morning at five o'clock. 160,000 Palestinians were going to work inside the 48 territories. And yet, it was a general strike. How come? There's no union. The right. Palestinian Authority has not even organized a union for the Palestinian workers going into inside, you know, to work. Well, so, there's a union, but it's useless. Ah, it's okay. It, it's <laughs> the, the head of the union, his name is Shahar Saad. He is uh, a leader within Fatah movement, which is runs the Palestinian Authority, which is uh, right. a, a subsidiary of the occupation. Yeah. Now there's no calling for uh, strikes on the West Bank. Actually, uh, anybody calling for any strike or any demonstrations on the West Bank, the Palestinian Authority, which is a Vichy government uh, of the Zionists, it goes out and this this uh, you know stop it from proceeding and yeah. many people are being arrested by the oh, yeah. by the pa <laughs> yeah yeah even more so one time you know a, um 
Abbas, he made some sort of stupid statement, you know, so we're going to have a demonstration, you know, to demonstrate against Abbas in the center of Nablus and Dawar. Okay. So we're going down there, walking down, you know, to the corner. And then there was already, you know, like a, a loudspeaker and, and the other, uh, you know, people there, you know, and a lot of police. And some guy comes onto the loudspeaker from Fatah and says, anybody who demonstrates today against Abbas will be arrested. Totally blatant, you know, like open, you know, like repression like that. Yes, yes, yes. I think he, I have it on video even. Them. Yeah. And so, you know, like in the, and so everybody decided, you know, not to demonstrate, you know, because, because of it's, that. Uh, Fatah is, is nothing but a subsidiary of the occupation. Uh, lately, even uh, political statements by uh, Fatah leaders actually uh, justified the Israeli uh, genocide in Gaza because of Hamas did the Hamas did that even using the same uh, wording of the Zionist occupation that uh, Hamas hides among Palestinian civilians it's sure. it's disgusting it's, uh -huh. it's they just showed their return color 100 percent we knew them but now it's it's right to the open on the open yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. uh I'd like to uh, make a comment at this point to congratulate all the people who are viewing this video and have lasted this long. Because what I've noticed is that in social media, there's a lot of people, you know, listening to the um, progressive journalists, you know, giving their account of what's happening in Palestine and, and elsewhere. Okay. A lot of good ones. Gray zone. Even though democracy now is, 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 uh, is controlled by its funding, uh, to the extent that it uh, ends up, you know, withholding any criticism of the Democratic Party. Yes. It's still social media, you know, like and they do some reports that are good. But this is all just journalism. Journalism is not enough. What we are doing here is we are the activists who are engaged in the revolutionary struggle and the resistance against colonialism, imperialism, yes. capitalism, you know. And... You know what? I think people are still afraid to listen to us. They'd rather listen to a journalist that they think it's okay, you know, like, because that's part of uh, uh, liberal culture, you know, to listen to the news. And that's what yeah. they call it, the news. And that's it. That's as far as they're yeah. willing to go, listening to the news. Uh, but mm -hmm. listen to activists like us who yeah. have been engaged for 40 years, 50 years. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> that's not yeah. normal. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to just uh, add, add on to that, Abraham, because um, these yesterday, yesterday I saw something on one of these programs, not going to mention the name of the program, but they called people like us uh, dirtbag leftists. And I wrote them a letter. I said, who the hell are you to call some? Oh, no, no. They use that word. Uh -huh. And oh I would God. say, yes, yes. And I would say, wait a minute. We're in the streets. We're organizing. We're, we're facing the FBI repression. We're facing our jobs being taken from us. We have to wear masks and sunglasses and a, and a, and a face mask to cover our, our faces so we not, we're not identified. Um, we, we've been working for decades in, in hospitals, in communities, in prisons, um, trying, to get, trying to get people organized. You can't call us anything but, but hard, hard, hard working social activists. And I want people that, who listen to us to realize that we are people who are involved in the struggle. We, we, we don't just talk to you about it. When, say, we get off this program, we do something in the community or, or in the world to, to make what we're talking about active. And that's why this, this type of program is different than the others you see, which is good. good it's great reporting. Mm. But when they raise the... When the gray zone raises money for their reporters, what did PayPal and um, uh, other sources do? They seized the money. They took the money that they had raised. They did, and they made people give it back to gray. They made it. They made all the contributors give it back to the contributors, and it goes to Russell to raise the money. 
So a gray zone is one journalist that is clearly having an impact uh-huh. because they they wouldn't have attacked gray zone. This happened. They raised fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars for for their reporter. So 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 we have a salary. That's mm-hmm. pretty nice of them, I think, to raise money for a reporter. I think absolutely, that's definitely, absolutely. Yeah. And the people raised the money, and um, uh, one of these cl- cloud 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 fundraising groups seized the money. That's they did. Mm-hmm. You could ask, I go ask Gray Zone. They'll tell you they seized their money, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't give it to Gray Zone. So mm-hmm. people who are involved in struggle, that's what happens to you. Mm-hmm. When you're serious, they attack you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and luckily, yeah. They, yeah, that's what they do. So that's a, that's just let everybody know, we see, we leave here, we're doing something in, in the community, in, in our country, in our union, something to make this stuff, re, make this become reality. Yeah. We're, we're not just sitting here doing a um, a um, report, we, we, you know, which is okay. You know? yeah. The journalism is yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, Steve. Yeah. And true, and it has been true for us for a very long time. We've been active 40, 50 years. I remember the first demonstration in 1968 against the occupation when, every, when the Zionists were still saying that it was temporary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, temporary. Yeah, well. Nothing temporary with expansionism and colonization. Yeah. Nothing. And this includes exactly. the social democratic Zionists as well, the so called socialist Zionists. The same. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like the socialist uh, German Nazi party. <laughs> 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 they were socialists too, eh? <laughs> they sure were yeah. national, national the Nazis, socialists. The Nazis, they called themselves socialists, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Very good. Okay. So we're going to. Uh, package this and send it out to everybody, to the world. And Excellent. now we say, you know, pay attention, world. You know, this is serious. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Solidarity, everyone. Yeah. That's right. Solidarity. Solidarity. See you next week. Yeah. Bye-bye.